Welcome to coverage of live high school football, powered by KX Sports on the Dakota CW. Good evening and welcome to the Magic City for a big time battle between two single A foes that know each other quite well. Number one in the state, Melba Drink Anna Moose Garrison, battling Bishop Ryan and Tristan Thomas alongside me, Phil Benatti here on the call for what should be a good battle. A lot on the line for both of these teams as we near the playoffs. Tristan, as we get going here, what's your overall view of this matchup going in? Yeah, I mean, obviously two teams with, with playoff hopes. Uh, Velvet Drake and Moose Garrison, of course, coming in as the, the favorite, undefeated. Haven't really been challenged yet so far, but, you know, a team that has, has challenged them in recent years would be Bishop Ryan. You know, in 2021, they're the last team to beat the Aggies, uh, knocked them out of the playoffs, and beat them in the regular season. And, you know, last year's game in Velva for the Penny Trophy was a 14-12 to game. Defensive struggle, only a two-point win, and that was tied for uh, Velva's closest margin of, of loss or victory um, to, with the Dakota Bowl, just a two-point win. So, you know, on, on paper, you'd say, okay, Velva's got the all the advantage coming in and uh, is expecting a big win, but you, know, you look at recent history and you know, that might tell you otherwise. Certainly uh, we'll have a lot on the line and certainly a little bit extra between both teams as we get into this one. Uh, just to set the table here, Velva winning the coin toss and choosing to receive. Interesting start here. Uh, it's going to be a brisk, cold night here in Minot. 46 degrees at the time of kickoff. What do you think of that decision to take the ball to start? Yeah, it's it's bold. It's saying, hey, we wanna we wanna come out and strike first and, and show off our, our explosive offense with, with Ben Shep and Reggie Bruner and all the all the weapons they've got. Of course the running back Hank Bodine, he can run it, he can catch it. Trayson Eigelhart, the leading receiver coming in, uh, one of those garrison guys on this Velva Drake and Moose Garrison team and says, Hey, we wanna strike right away and wanna spoil senior night. Taking it away will be Connor Harvey to get things going for us. Should be a fun one between two rivals, 18 and 18 overall as we kick it away. We picked up on the one hop. It's Reggie Bruner bringing the left side in, tackled just past the 30 yard line, and that is where Vilva will get going on offense. As I mentioned before, a lot of, a lot of uh, weapons to deal with for uh, this Bishop Ryan defense, the Aggies, just an explosive offense, 350 to 76. That's what they're outscoring their opponents by this season. So a tall task for this Bishop Ryan defense. Probably the, the toughest challenge they've faced so far this season, even with teams like LEM and Dickinson Trinity playing them earlier in the season. Velva led by their quarterback, Ben Shep, who has been nothing but spectacular this season. 25 touchdowns, one interception, and we have a penalty to start this one. We'll see who it's on. A little bit of laundry already. Got a false start for Velva, so that'll push him back five yards. Start at first and 15 now for the Aggies. It's like a little flinch forced the, the D line to jump there and already moving back a little bit. You got a couple Okuson brothers that are leading the way on the front line for this Lions defense, and those are two players that are going to be certainly spotlighted during this one. As Velva sets up, empty set, shotgun to start on first and 15, four wide receivers. On the near side of your screen, if you go to the screen pass to Trey Eigelhart as he busts the tackle and gets just near the starting line of scrimmage, maybe a gain of three, it'll bring up second and 12. He's had quads to the, the right side, got those three, three, three guys blocking in the little pitch out to Eigelhart, but well covered by that defense, only uh, looks like a three-yard gain. Eigelhart, the leading receiver for the Aggies coming into this one, just over 570 yards, nine touchdowns, on the year for the junior. And now Velva showing one formation and breaking out of it. Now going to a single back formation, Hank Bodine in the backfield. And in motion, quick throw out. It's Eigelhart again, this time finding space past the first down marker. And has plenty enough and move the chains for the Aggies. Another key block there on the outside, just getting it in the hands of the playmaker and Eigelhart and uh, let Reggie Bruner make that key block on the outside. and. Uh, just like that, the first down of the game, first first down of the game for Velva Drake and Ms. Garrison. So two plays, two Eigelhart receptions. On some quick passing, maybe bust through that line that Bishop Ryan is so hard to 
battle against in the front. Modine on the right of Shep. And in motion, Aglehart. Shep taking it himself, but met immediately at the line with a couple Lions. Good stop there for Bishop Ryan as he's met at the line of scrimmage. Maybe no gain there. It looks like he didn't get much there. You mentioned the trenches. That's an area where Bishop Ryan feels like they have a, a, a advantage. You know, a younger, less experienced Velvet Drake and Moose Garrison offensive line, and that's that's an area the Aggies or the Lions want to see uh, see some wins and and maybe uh, keeping this game close. Snap to Shep, step back, looking, and he is hit from the behind the line, coming in on the sack. It's Connor Harvey. Yeah, Connor Harvey, the big kid, does a lot of things for this Lions team, and a good play there, just breaking through, good coverage, and Ben Shep had nowhere to go with that ball. So a big play for Bishop Ryan. They're back down, back to behind the 40-yard line. We're going to call it third and 18. Just start of this one, opening drive for the Aggies. The Ben Shep's only been sacked four times coming into this one, and so an early sack here could have his handful tonight with this defense. Takes the snap, drop back, has time across the field to Eigelhart. Going to be short of a first down marker, going to be a gain of 15. So bring a fourth and short just across the midfield marker. The line's only rushing three. You know, that, that's a hallmark of their defense, using a lot of their linebackers and DBs, um, just forcing fourth down, not you know, playing kind of up on the sticks there. And now it's a fourth and short. We'll see what the Aggies look to do here. Fourth and manageable. With such a prolific offense, they have the confidence to surely go for it here. Jeff in the shotgun. Bunched up line. Quick pitch out to Bodine, but he's tackled behind. And that'll be a turnover on downs. It looked like it was Cade Okuson that got the initial contact. And that is Bishop Ryan's spot where they will take over for their first offensive drive. That's a big stop right away. Again, Velva showing a lot of, uh, you know, that's kind of a, a good spot to go for it. Only fourth and short, but a, a good stop and a good tone setter there for this Lions team. Now Bishop Ryan will take over. Right at the 50-yard line, right at that ear of the Minot State Beaver. That is where they place the ball. Bishop Ryan playing all their home games here at Herb Parker Stadium, where also the Minot State Beavers play on Saturdays. So now we flip it over to the Bismarck, or excuse me, the Bishop Ryan offense, as it's Jet Lundin taking them himself over to the right side, has plenty of room, and just like that, Bishop Ryan has the lead. Touchdown. Lions. Goodness, how do you like that? You go empty set and let your playmaker, your explosive quarterback, as called by the head coach of the Aggies, Matt Weidler, an explosive there for sure, just hit a seam, found his way down the right sideline, and look at this, that the Lions with a big stop, and they get a big play right after that, forcing that turnover on downs, a 50-yard touchdown for Bishop Ryan, and Looks like they're, they're going to go 4 2. Jet Lundin didn't even give me time enough to talk about the stats he <laughs> put still up this year. We're still getting set here, Jet. Come on, I man. I know. So they're going for 2, up 6 0. And we got a three snap penalty. It's going to be a false start on Bishop Ryan. So we'll move it back 5 for the two point try. Yeah, Jet Lundin coming in, nearly 2,000 yards of offense himself. He. Throw for 1,200 plus yards in passing, over 660 yards rushing through the ground, and I'll say he's crossed out the 70, 700 yard marker <laughs> with that 50 yard scamper there. Yeah, the leading rusher for this Aggies team, and it, or the uh, the Lions, excuse me. And it's it's an interesting matchup between these two quarterbacks, Ben Shep and uh, Jet Lundin. Quarterbacks do who do a lot of things for their teams, and not to mention they were also friends growing up. Had had nice things to say about each other this week. The Lions going for two. Lundin rolling to his right. Doesn't have anything, and this time he's going to be taken down behind the line. In on the stop, Evan Wrench. And it'll keep it 6 nothing Lions early. Just three, under three and a half minutes going into this one. And who would have thought Bishop Ryan leading the number one team in the state to go so far? But you know this is a rivalry game, and they were ready to get this one going. Yeah, if there's ever a game to be ready for, it's... It's a game against the number one team in the state, a team who hasn't lost since 2021, um, and they've done exactly that. I mean, that fourth down stop was huge, and 
that quick turnover. And as a coach, I'm sure you always want to say, hey, let's get let's get a big play right away. You always think that comes in the form of a, a deep pass and, a, and dialing up a deep bomb. But the, the Lions said, well, no, we're just going to we're just going to spread everyone out and, and let our quarterback go make a play. So the one thing that stood out so far is, is the line play. Really, it's the line play of the defense for Bishop Ryan. And then to open up what Jet Lundin was running through on the flip side in one play, the Lions the Lions line has been pretty good to start so far. Yeah, that's, they, they feel like that's a strong suit. A lot of big kids. I mean, it starts right up front with Koy and of course, the uh, NDSU commit. Um, but, you know, that's that's something they feel like is a strong point of their team. And, and it kind of changed what they do defensively. They've had a couple injuries on the offensive line. And, you know, that's kind of why they, they, they save their guys for offense. They're, they're big offensive linemen, a lot of them. And that's, you know, obviously paid dividends there. Iglehart hit right at the 35. Making the stop looks like it was Connor Harvey. Shutting it down there, and so that's where Velvo will take their second drive of the game. Well, how do you respond, right? That's You, you have a, a couple of positive plays, a couple of first downs on that first drive, ultimately stopped on fourth down. How do the Aggies respond? We've seen them respond time and time again this season to any adversity they've seen, but we'll see what happens in this one. We'll see what the Aggies do. They have not lost since they last played Bishop Ryan in 2021. There's still so much more game to go. This Aggie squad averaging 50 points a game as they toss out to Hank Bodine to the right side. Jed's a tackler, pushed just beyond the 40-yard line, out of bounds to the 42. We call it a gain of six for Bodine. Hank Bodine, another one of those those big returners for uh, Belva Drake and who's Garrison, and, and a guy that the teammates really, really like, You know, a kind of a leader in that locker room, a guy who's um, doing a lot of things for, for the team in just – can catch, can run, and does a lot of things on the field, and obviously a, a good start to the drive there. Bodine accounting for 15 touchdowns for the Aggies this time as he takes a direct snap. This time moving forward, we do have a penalty on the play, on the play just across the 50-yard line, but we'll see what the marker is. That was right as the ball was snapped. So you wonder if that's a illegal formation type deal. Looks like the refs are looking some sort of illegal procedure by Velva, so that'll push the ball back. So nothing doing on that play. And we'll make it second down and longer. Bodine, again, the Aggies going to the ground, and you know he's been he's been a guy who's just you know really leading the way in that in that backfield, and like to kind of settle things down a little bit. I think after that first drive, and what better place to do that on the ground? Two penalties on this offense to start for Velva. Shep faking the toss pass. Now this time throwing ahead and just out of the reach of Eigelhart. He had a lot of space in front of him if they connected, but instead it's going to be incomplete. Bring up third down. You saw Shep on that, that pump fake. He was looking to kind of draw the defense in and maybe hit Bruner down the field, but that was well covered by, by the Lions. And now another third and, third and long here, and, and the Lions can maybe uh, dial up some pressure if they want to. We'll see if they can do that. Do get a lot of pressure from their front line in general. A lot of big bodies up ahead, as we've seen already in this action. Bunch set, three wide receivers up top. Shep, this time throwing across the middle. There's a man. He hits Eigelhart, who sheds a tackler, hops over somebody else in there. Finally across the 50, down inside Bishop Ryan territory to the 47. That's a good find by, by Shep, again, to his leading receiver, uh, and Trace and Iglehart, a guy who he's he's looked to time and time again already, and it has been heavily involved. One thing about this Bishop, this Velva offense, they have gotten off to really hot starts. They most of their points this year, out of the 350 points they've scored, 150 of them have come in a first quarter. So we're just about hitting the halfway point of this quarter, just seven minutes under the seven minute mark. So already Bishop Ryan doing better than most teams against this Velva offense as we have a first down. Shep, this time, fakes the pass, and this time hit behind the line. Who was in on that play? Looks like Big Koi Okerson getting a sack. Can't miss him. Big Koi doing a lot of things, uh, playing both ways, and uh, again, kind of getting the Aggies behind the sticks a little bit and forcing them to make those, those plays right down the field a little bit. We now got a second and 13, loss of three on the quarterback draw play that was hit behind the line. So Shep, this time, 
Makes the snap. Drop back. Has some space. Throws deep. He's got a man wide open. It's a big time touchdown, but we have a penalty flag behind the play. And it looks like we're going to bring the offense back. Reggie Bruner all alone for the Aggies on that play down the field. But obviously the penalty it looks to be something that looks like everyone's coming back. You can kind of tell by my subdued ex excitement that I knew that was not going <laughs> not gonna to work out for Velva. But it was a nice throw. Nice yeah. throw from Shep there. On the run. Looks like a hold against the Aggies. So that will bring it back. The Aggie fans not too happy about that call. They wanted to see six on the board, but instead we're pushing it back 10 yards in the second and quite a bit now. And, and, and Shep, that's something he does. He can get outside the pocket, can run. I mean, I'm sure you've seen him run over a, a guy here or there, uh, but he can also uh, make those throws across his body on the run. And a, a good throw there, but now, again, uh, up against it with uh, second and a, a long ways to go. Bodine in motion, swing pass out to him, has some space, gets ahead, sheds a tackle, sheds another tackle. This has got first down yardage. He keeps going outside to the 25, pushed out of bounds. What a run by Hank. Bodine after the pass. A little, just a, just a pitch out to your running back. Really simple, and that's exactly what Matt Weidler talks about with the what his team wants to do schematically is just keep it simple. Let your playmakers go make plays, and that's exactly what Hank Bodine did. Just running down the field, running guys over, smash mouth football here in the cold weather. It's amazing to think that a lot of these skill players that Velva's relied upon, only juniors going into this year, they still have another year of high school to go. Guys certainly have a lot of time together as well. Bodine hit behind the line. Big time tackle from Drew's walk. Loss of one. Good open field tackle from Zwak, the junior linebacker. He's got 30 solo tackles coming into this one. One of the top tacklers for the Lions entering this game. That kind of a uh... That the counterpart does a lot of the same things Bodine does for the, the Lions. Shep steps back, pressure in his face, throws to the end zone. Oh, we got some contact, Ooh. and we will have pass interference. The contact on Trace, Trey Eigelhart, that'll move the ball closer. Yeah, that was just the, the contact a little too early there uh, from the, the DB. Trying to make that make the play, but you got to give the receiver a chance to make a play as well. Almost had it timed perfectly, but that instead will be a first down for Velva. That's why they say it's so tough to play uh, a DB or, or even a receiver as well. It's, it's so tough to, to try and time where, where you're going to make your play, where you're going to make a play on the ball and, and not getting in the way of the, the receiver there. And now all of a sudden the, the Aggies back in business uh, with only 19 yards to go to the end zone. So first trip into the red zone for the Velva offense. First trip in the red zone for anybody in this game to start. Just under five minutes to go. And in motion, handoff. Bodine up the middle. Is he going to be touched? Just barely into the end zone. Touchdown, Velva. Hank Bodine rumbling in and tying this one up at six. Yeah, that, that young offensive line clearing a space right up the middle for Hank Bodine. Just a, an easy, easy play for him. He just hit the seam and was right into the end zone. And a, a big response there. Uh, Velva Drake and Moose Garrison, of course, just using that, that penalty to their advantage right away and getting into the end zone, now trying to take the lead. So now they will go for two to see if they can take the lead at the two-yard line. Shep in the shotgun, as he's been most of this game, looking for a swing pass, and it's dropped. Mm. Kyle Volson on the target there, but no good, and we are tied at six, just under five minutes to go, so Velva... Getting on the board on their second drive it was a pretty efficient one at that. Yeah, good response. Uh, you know, getting getting in some some second and longs, some third and longs, but ultimately able to to re respond and, and tie the game. Had a spot, had an open guy in Kyle Volson there. He probably could have made his way into the end zone, but of course, it's so tough to make that that catch when you you see the end zone, you see the the space you got to get to. But of course, it's a catch and run, not not a run before you catch. <laughs> you got to look it in before you go. So, 6-6, six, six, and where are the lights we going? We have lost the lights. We have lost the <laughs> lights here. Uh-oh. Lights, please. Yeah, I don't know what happened here. As we have a little bit of uh, an outage. 
We still have power, as you can tell. We're still here. Scoreboard's but, still on. Uh, scoreboard's still on, but someone must have hit the light switch. <laughs> I don't know. We can see. It's We've got the, the sun setting here. The sun has set, yes. Are we going to play on? We'll see. I don't see any stoppages yet. You know, the refs are talking. We do have a council of refs <laughs> right at the Minot State M. I think they're checking to see if the coach is like, can we still play? <laughs> I mean, at least it's not the, the Super Bowl in New Orleans where – We've got the outside light a little bit. Are you claiming some home cooking for Bishop Ryan right now? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's a, that's a that's a creative one for sure. <laughs> so we'll see. They're insulting the coaches, Derek Knudsen and Matt Weidler, and I think we're gonna play on. I think that's what we're gonna do here. As the ref is going back to the goal line, and yeah, we're gonna play without some lights for a little bit here. All right. It's one way to do it. I think you at home can still see what's going on. It's still light enough outside, but it's tougher for me to see the numbers here. As we got a return here from Bowden Irk, I believe, up ahead. And that's where the Bishop Ryan Lions offense will get going just behind the 30-yard line. How do the Lions respond, right? Obviously, your, your your defense made some nice plays, but ultimately the, the Aggies were able to go down and respond. And you, you got the big play, but can you sustain drives? I think that's the, the question uh, we want to see from the Aggie, or from Lions, if they can answer that. Certainly. So play on as we go without the lights. Shotgun set for Lundeen. The Lions scored on one play of offense as he pushes ahead. And oh. we got a fumble. It looks like we have a fumble, and it looks like Velva has gotten on it. We'll see what the refs say, and it is Aggies football. I don't think Jet Lundin was down. They go the quarterback run again. Good play to punch it out, knock the ball away, and all of a sudden, now in plus territory for the Aggies. Looks like Mac Jokum in on the hit for the Aggies, and just like that, it's Velva's football inside Bishop Ryan territory. The two one-play drives so far for... For Bishop Ryan, the first one going great, second one kind of the opposite. Velva's really dominated time of possession so far in this game. But the tie up 6-6 six, six to start. Shep, back to pass, throwing across the middle, plenty of space for Eigelhart, down to about the 20-yard line. And just a, a good pass, good throw and catch. Just uh, Eigelhart able to, to find the empty spot in the defense, just able to settle down there and give a, a good spot for his quarterback to find him. We have a stoppage of play and a timeout for Bishop Ryan. So that's their first of the half. What do you think of playing without lights? I mean, we can do it now, but I don't know, in what, 20, 30 minutes? Yeah. It could get dicey. could get a little dicey here as we, we get closer to darkness. What a beautiful setting we have here at the Herb Parker Stadium. Overlooking downtown Minot to the north of or to the south of us. What a beautiful fall, autumn afternoon and evening here in the Magic City. Up near North Hill, you just get a, a beautiful outlook of, of the sun setting in the downtown, of course. And yeah, it's just a, it feels like football, football weather out there. It's the, the first real chilly weather we've gotten so far this fall. And yeah, it's just it, it's it's the best time of the year. So Velva's been able to hit on some big plays moving forward. How do you think Bishop Ryan will counteract that going in after the timeout? Yeah, I mean, obviously you're relying on your defense again to do the same thing you did in that, that first drive of, of that, that fourth, and, fourth and two to go. You're going to need another big stop here. Jeff, back to pass, going across, and he keeps hitting Eigelhart in that little slot curl spot. He's set up nicely in between the zone there and now down to about the three-yard line. Eigelhart's been cooking in this first yeah, quarter. That's the, that's the trouble of the zone defense when you're not matched up one-on-one -on -one and, and your quarterback has time to throw. If, if the receiver's able to get into an empty spot, it's an easy pitch and catch. Now for those watching, we do not. It's not the end of the first quarter. Still 4-12 to go and counting. As if we're handing it off to Bodine, who's up and into the end zone. His second touchdown of the game, second touchdown of this four, first quarter. Hank Bodine, nicely done. Yeah, once once the Aggies are inside the five, it's Hank Bodine time, and they look right back 
to their standout running back. Again, his second score of the game already. So now the Aggies will go for two, which you see mostly at this level of football, going for two. Aggies break the huddle. Michael Hart at the top of your screen. Bodine to the left of or to the right of Shep. Shep this time looking to keep it himself and will be tackled behind the line by Jace Schwan. So that'll keep it six. A six point trip for the Aggies with 4.05 to go. 12 6 Velva. 12 unanswered. And Tristan, I think. Bishop Ryan defense needs a little break after being on the field for most of this first quarter. Yeah, that's a big ask of your defense. Already having to, to be on the field for the most majority of the first quarter, and, and then you give it right back. That's just such a tough spot to put your defense in. And now you, you need the, the, the offense to, to make another big play or at least sustain a drive and, and let those uh, defensive guys who aren't going both ways uh, a chance to just take a little break. The play disparity, 18 to 2. Velva has run 18 plays. Bishop Ryan has only run two at this point in this first quarter. 4.05 to go. And now it might be too dark to play football. It's, it, we, we've, we've seen it in a few minutes. It's, it's kind of the, this darkness is starting to set in. I know the cameras may make it look like it's not that dark, but it is pretty dark out here. And it looks like the refs are all huddled at about the 33-yard line. So... We have a delay here of some sort, and we're going to see if they can figure it out here in this first quarter. The lights have been out for about 10, 15 minutes or so of this game. It wasn't too bad about 15 minutes ago, but now it's starting to get hard to see out there on the field. I usually right at, right at 7 o'clock, you still got the, the sun in, in your eyes one way or the other kind of you know setting in the west, and it's a, a nice picturesque field. But now at this point of the, the, the evening at 7.30, it's starting to get a little bit too, too dark without the lights. And we'll see things get going again. Yeah, so talk about this Velva start for their offense, though. Uh, to, to have a little bit of a rough start on their first drive, how, what do you think they did differently to get going in those next couple drives? I think it's winning up front. I think that they, they lost the, that battle right away, I think. Um, you know, Bishop Ryan punched him in the mouth a little bit on that first drive. Uh, you know, winning up front was a big thing, but also just you know making plays in space, getting it to your um, you know, your your go-to guys in space. The the Trace and Eigelharts, the Hank Bodines, letting them make plays and and getting into open open space just from you know working the field laterally, not always you know vertically down the field as as you know people would maybe like their offenses to do. When you can when you can win those blocks on the outside. Those receivers, you know, getting in position where they need to. And also, yeah, it's 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 getting the playmakers uh, there in, in space to, to make those plays. So we're going to take a little bit of a break here. We're going to take a commercial break, and we'll be right back with more football. We are in a uh, outage delay of some sort with the lights. 12-6 Velva. We'll be right back after these messages. Uh, I don't know how long this is going to go. <laughs>
right, welcome back to Herb Parker Stadium. And uh, if you're wondering why we don't have football going right now, it's a light outage delay of some sort. We have power pretty much everywhere. The scoreboard's on. We have the play clock. We have power in our booth here. And you're seeing pictures of mine up. But the only thing not working are the lights. And we do have our first sign of life, at least across the field right now, of the lights coming back on. I wonder if we can get a shot of that. Up there, yes, there is. that is our first look of lights and life of getting this game back going. We are not under the Friday night lights yet. We are under the Friday night light. <laughs> the Friday night light. I think we'll need a few more of those to come on before we can get play resumed. But 12-6, Velva leading right now. Um, we're in the first quarter, just 4:05 to go in the first quarter. Uh, you know, a strange start to this game, to be honest with yeah. you. Uh, you know, Velva, you know, uh, in turnover on downs, one play for Bishop Ryan to take the lead, a long drive for Velva, and then for a touchdown to tie it, and then an immediate fumble by Bishop Ryan and a touchdown after that for Velva. So not quite your conventional football game to start here, but uh, it's been a lot of action to get going here. Light update, we got at least a couple more on one of the lights on the away sideline underway, so kind of that quarter of the field is a little bit. We get some more turning on on the other side. So progress as you just made. saw, your picture there, those lights coming on, progress is being made right now, and we might be getting football soon. I see some lights coming on on the near side as well and on both sides of the football field. So, yeah, just kind of an unusual start. If you're a football player right now and you're in the middle of a delay, first of all, Velva started getting going with their offense, and now everything's kind of shut down for them, and they haven't played football for about 10, 15 minutes now. Got to do your best to just stay stay warm, stay locked in. But the longer this delay goes on, the more I think that can impact uh, a team's, I guess, um, emotion or just being it locked into the game. You know, I think we saw Bishop Ryan or Velva take a kind of take a punch a little bit, and then they kind of settled into the game and, and started playing Aggie football. But now this this delay kind of shifts the emotions of it. Maybe you got to do your best to stay locked in and, and stay ready to go for the eventual resumption of play. You're that Bishop Ryan defense has seen 18 plays already in this one. This certainly is an advantage on that side of things where you get a pretty good decent rest after being on the field for most of the first quarter. Good chance to get a little bit of a rest, get, get some water and get, get uh, just kind of get your bearings uh, again and, and hopefully you, you get your offense to, to put together a drive and, and put something together and keep you on the sideline just a little bit longer. And it looks like we are starting to get the field a little bit lighter here. Yes, it looks like every single light is on in some capacity. I think they're just waiting for them to warm up a little bit more as we get going in this one. Looks like we are getting close to the resumption of play. It'll be a Velva kickoff to Bishop Ryan after they scored a touchdown. Did not get the two-point conversion. It's been all Hank Bodine to start this one for Velva, who scored the both touchdowns for the Aggies. Hank Bodine, certainly a Good player for a lot of good weapons for Velva, and he's certainly a good one for them. And here we go as the kickoff team for Velva is now back on the field. The fans are ready to get some football back. About a 10-minute ten, ten delay or so in this one, but it looks like we are back under the lights for football. It's never a normal Friday here in North Dakota, am I right? You just got to roll the punches. <laughs> you never know what you're going to see, but you just got to – Got to do what you can. All right. So we will see the Bishop Ryan offense for the third time as it kicks away. Going way back there. Bobbled a little bit. Bringing it back. Gus Engelhard. Excuse me. Hayden Stay on the return. Just past the 20-yard line, I believe. And it will be at the 20-yard line. That is where Bishop Ryan will start on offense. And, and the key, like we mentioned, for the Aggies, is it, for, for the Lions, is just coming up with uh, a couple of drives. Get some, get get settled into the game. Get settled into to playing offense and, and and getting it to some of your your playmakers, your Bryce Bybettos, your Gus Engelhards, and and uh, Drews Walk as well. Uh, all guys who who can help out this this Lions offense. Two plays for Bishop Ryan. Two runs by Jet Lundin. One for a touchdown. One on a fumble as he swings it out. This time going to be cost by Gus Engelhard. Maybe a gain of two or so. Yes, second and eight. It's a short little 
Little screen play to the outside. One of the main receivers on this team, Gus Engelhard. And of all the stats that blow my mind about Velva, it has to be their pass defense giving up only 47 yards per game. That's right, 47 yards through the air. This is a swarming defense when it comes to passing. As Jet Lundin takes him himself up the middle, down to about the 30, and that looks like it's good enough for a first down. Yeah, this Aggie defense really a, a no-fly zone. Um, they've got a lot of playmakers out there and are really a tough, tough unit to stop, but a good start there for Bish Bryan able to get uh, the, the run going again in a first down. All right, so first down for the Lions. Lundeen in the shotgun. Zwack next to him. We have a three-snap penalty. Kind of a half-hearted snap as they're going to back it up five yards for a false start. As a former center, I know you, you can't do that, of course. You're the one who really needs to know the snap count because the, the, the play starts with you every time. I can't wait to hear line play break down by you <laughs> later in this one. <laughs> yeah, my, my one year as the varsity starter back in Illinois. So it makes me a, a big expert for sure. <laughs> All right, Lundin, kind of a pistol formation now. Two wide receivers on each side. Hand off Zwak. Met immediately at the line. It was Evan Wrench who was right there. Maybe a gain of one. Bring up second along. And definitely the, the D line making the play there for, for the, the Aggies, not giving up an inch. And you know, that's a, a, a battle we got to watch this, this whole night is, is the line play and who's going to have the advantage up front. So second and 14. Empty set for the Lions. Lundin going to take it himself and immediately hit. Maybe a gain of one. Luke Selzler making the play. The cousin of another Selzler, you know, Braden, of course, made that, that goal line stand in the Dakota Bowl final to knock off Central Cass. Another Selzler making plays for the Aggies. Plays of the year during the KX Sports Awards. The play that captured another title for Velva was their 11th in their program history. As Lundeen had a pass across and no incomplete intended to Ramsey Walls just ahead of him. Big 6-7 receiver trying to get him in a one-on-one with Reggie Bruner. A little bit of a tug of the jersey, but overall I think you, you let those guys play a little bit and a good no call. So it'll bring up fourth down and looks like we're going to punt it away. Lundeen also the punter for this Lions team. Back to receive will be Eigelhart for the Aggies. Straight away punt, a little bit of a liner. Eigelhart catching it on the fly, got a little bit of room, moving up ahead to the left, makes a man miss. It's right at midfield, just shy of it. And that's where Velva will start, just at about the 49 yard line. So 12 6, Velva. With the lead now, and the ball, with 1.15 left to go in this first quarter. Another solid return there for the Aggies, and, and it seems like they've kind of won the, the field position battle so far in this game. It's been a long quarter, coming to a close, uh, even with the light delay. <laughs> These first quarters always seem to fly by, but uh, obviously the, the delay slowed our First quarter down here just a little bit. It is also senior night, so we did get off to a slow start as well with that. But got to celebrate the senior. Shep going deep. Eigelhart wide open. Blaze out. No. <laughs> he had it in his hands just, just ahead of him. Almost a big play there for Trey Eigelhart. Just a one-on-one, a, -on -one, a, a good play, a good throw well placed by, by Ben Shep. Just a little bit too far in front of uh, Eigelhart and just couldn't. That would have been a highlight reel catch. He was able to make it. He laid out for it. He's feeling it a little bit as he gets back to the huddle. Take a moment. <laughs> he gathers his breath. 12 on the play clock as the play is just getting in the huddle. We might get a timeout here. Let's see if the Velva can snap it before a delay a game. Three on the play clock. And they do. Hand off Eigelhart on the sweep up ahead. Has first down yardage and across the 40. 
So even after the long pass play to Eigel, Hardy has enough energy to go on jet sweep and pick up a first down, gain a 12. Yeah, number 12 with uh, the run and just, again, doing a little bit of everything. He's been the, the go-to guy. They've looked looked Reggie Bruner's way a little bit. And obviously, Hank, Hank Bodine doing his thing on the ground. But Eigelhart, again, just making the plays and moving the chains. That was actually Eigelhart's first carry of the year. Wow. So introducing some new plays in here. It's interesting. I've seen them do that 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 same kind of play, but usually it's a pop pass where it's you, you, it's a pass, but really it's a handoff. That was just a full-blown handoff. Jet motioning out Bodine, maybe looking to swing. This time going across the middle. It's Bolson inside the red zone, down to about. And he lost the ball, but they're going to say he was down. Kyle Bolson with the catch and run down to the 16-yard line. Gain of 22. First time we've seen Bolson involved, really, in the offense. Just another another play, uh, just settling into that zone and, and finding empty space. And against again, the Aggies marching down into the red zone. And that's a, a spot where Fish Bryan feels like they need to get better at uh, defending, and obviously in, in scoring in the red zone. That's where a lot of games are won or lost. So far, the Aggies have, have come, come through inside the red area. And we have triple zeros on the game clock, which means we will end the quarter here. So Velva leading 12-6. We'll take a commercial break, and we'll be right back with more Bishop Ryan Velva football. So we'll lose a break in halftime. All right, welcome back. First and 10 inside the red zone for Velva. Snap to Shep, a little high. Hand off Odin up the middle. Misses the tackler. Gets hit at the 7. Inside the 5, down to the 3 yard line. What a run, Hank Bodine. Continuing to be physical. Just so strong. And, you know, he, he mentioned to me before the season just one of the, being one of those leaders in the weight room. And you, you don't have to watch too, too much of him play to see that he is a guy who puts that time in in the weight room. Just so strong, so hard to tackle. And we've seen that in this first half. Six foot, 215, his measurements, the junior. Hardy with two touchdowns tonight, maybe, maybe making a bid for his third. Shep this time under center, first and goal. And a uh, Bodine sheds a tackler, dives into the end zone. Touchdown, Velva. Once again, go right back to Bodine. If, the, if you can't stop the run, then why not just go back to it? And that's, again, Bodine is third touchdown on the ground so far this game. He has been the go-to guy, especially inside that red area. You can't quite bring him down on that initial hit. It, it takes a lot to bring up 
Bodine. One of the top weapons for Velva as they're going to go for two here. Up 18 to 6 at the moment, looking to go up 20 to 6 on their rivals. A series that is locked up at 18 apiece per team. Bragging rights to go. Chef, play action, thrown as he hit, and he will connect. And making the grab, it's Kelson Maskell, the senior, who adds two more on the pl play. What a throw by Shep as he was hit. Yeah, good throw. And something I've been impressed with this season for Ben Shep is just the the poise under pressure. We've seen him face pressure in his face. He can he can make a man miss here or there in in the pocket. And we saw that there, just dealing with that and not letting that affect his where he's going with the football and. Found his man, and again, finally a, a two-point conversion. Finally someone converts one of those. Well, we'll be singing the praises of Ben Shep throughout this one. And this is a kid who's been starting since he was a freshman. He been he won playoff games on the road as a freshman. He's been in a lot of big spots. He's won a state title. Only a junior. So much experience under center. That could do a lot of wonders for you as a team. Yeah, I mean, those those underclassmen getting getting reps, and doing positive things, I think, is so important. And he's a junior, and it's just it's just been there, done that. You know, he's just kind of rolling in, wanting to make improvements, and obviously trying to grow as a player where he can. But yeah, that that experience and that poise he brings under center for for the Aggies, I think, is is pretty unmatched. So Bishop Ryan down 14 now, and needs some offense after their. 50-yard explosive run by Jet Lundin to start this one. Taking on the return, it's Gus Engelhard and brought down at about the 28-yard line. That's where Bishop Ryan will take over. So the name of the game, I think, for, for Bishop Ryan right now is, is dealing with adversity. They've dealt with adversity so far this season multiple times. You know, after that Dickinson Trinity game, they're 0-2. They're they, they've lost to the Titans and LEM. They had a players-only meeting, and a lot of these upperclassmen said, hey, this is not how we want this season to go. Coming off their first losing season since 2010, how do they respond? Something they've been able to get better at and improve at as the season goes along, and we'll see if, if that shows up tonight. Bishop Ryan sitting at 4-3. Four 4-1 and, three. Four and one on the region, but their one loss to Delex Burlington. Lundin, quick snap, throws, hits. His man across the middle brought down is Connor Harvey, the tight end. Big play, gain of 17, brings the first down markers. Good pitch and catch right away. Tight end Harvey, again, settling in the zone. You know, kind of similar teams and similar things they'll, they'll do uh, defensively. And uh, a good start there for to the drive for Bishop Ryan able to get near, near the midway point. Hand off to Harvey. Nothing doing, brought down by Eigelhart. Make us Eigelhart able to, to get the ball on the outside there and stacked up there. Eigelhart, kind of similar names. Eigelhart on Eigelhart, yes, <laughs> you're right. Just 10.30 to go in this first half. Velvo scoring 20 unanswered, second and 11. Motion is angle hard, but snap to Lundin, connects. It's Harvey again, sitting in the soft spot of the defense. And it's another first down for Bishop Ryan. Nice little pitch catch, just a little, little curl route again. Some good timing there from, from quarterback Jet Lundin, just finding his, his safety blanket at the tight end. Lundin getting in a little bit of a rhythm now with Connor Harvey. Bishop Ryan, amazingly, in Velvet territory for the first time tonight. Lundeen swinging it out. In and it's going to be picked off on the deflection. No, it's who's, who's got the ball? I think Drew Zwak wrestled it away. My goodness, it was Drew Zwak and it was Kyle Volson both fighting for the ball. I think both of them had it at some point, but it's going to be a loss of five on the completion. My goodness. One of those times where you're, you're on offense and then all of a sudden you turn into a defender and you got to wrestle the ball away and kind of a 
not a not a not a turnover on offense, but you you save the turnover and and ultimately uh, your your offense is grateful to still have the football. What a crazy play that was. So second and fifteen, Lundin this time taking up the middle. Nothing doing behind the line. The good tackle from Luke Selzler. Nothing doing. Maybe a gain of one for Lundin to bring up third and long. Velva keying in on those quarterback draws now. Hasn't been much doing for Lundin on those plays since the opening touchdown of 50 yards. So big third and long. We'll see if he can go to his tight end Harvey again. Did on a big play. That's the last time they converted on their last two third downs. Those were the plays. Lundin, plenty of time. Going deep. This one intended for the Beto, but no, it's going to be past his hands, incomplete, fourth and long. Looks like we might punt. Yeah, Lundin had some time, had his man by Beto down the field. It's overshadowed a little bit, and once again, turning it back over to the defense. Seems like Lundin's getting plenty of time in the pocket as he steps back to pass. So, just too much in the air on that pass. Lundin will now punt it away. Hesitation, a liner, Eigelhart taking it, busting up to the right side, and just brought down by Kate Okerson. Just had enough of him to bring him down. He'll be at the 30-yard line. So now Velva back on offense, and once they get in a rhythm, it is tough to stop this team. Scoring points. Still kind of waiting for, for this Velva Drake Animus Garrison team to uh, kind of dial up the, the deep deep ball. I mean, when you're up 14, you, you can control the clock. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But this is that's been the hallmark, I think, from for this year, in their, this Aggies team, of what they can do of being able to just throw the ball down the field and have give the Lions credit. They, they haven't allowed that just yet. Shep taking it himself. Barreling his way up for a gain of nine. Bring up second and one, Ben Shep on the keeper. That's yeah, just been the, 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 the typical brand of, of Velvet Drake Andrews Garrison football that we've been accustomed to running the ball. So kind of what, what's built the foundation of this winning program, and it's what we've seen carry them so far. we got a timeout, and it's Bishop Ryan that will take it their second timeout of the first half. Talk about it on second and one. It really seems like they haven't lost a step since Larry Sandy stepped down, you know, and, and it seems like Matt Weidler's really just taken the reins here in his first year, 7-0, and and uh, really it's all business as usual for Velva going along this year. Yeah, I remember talking to the team before the season, you know, uh, Matt Weidler's a guy who's been in the program for a, a long time. He's, he's a long-time Aggie for sure, and, you know, even Ben Shep was mentioning, hey, like kind of over the last couple of years, he's slowly been taking over the reins, taking over the job, and it was a, a pretty seamless transition, I think, for, for the Aggies and, and, and all these players who, you know, growing up with uh, Matt Weidler just kind of being there and, and being one of the coaches and having him step into the head role is, is seemingly uh, just a, a pretty smooth transition. This is a program that has seen 11 state titles, including last year, 12 Dakota Bowl appearances overall, just a stellar Aggie program that has been one of the stalwarts of North Dakota football here and poised to potentially repeat again if they continue to play like they've been playing all year number one team in the state 16 first place votes out of 19 on the pole this past week Shep hit as he throws connects big time catch by Reggie Bruner and Shep has no problem with the pressure in his face here's the first Reggie Bruner siding so far this uh, in, in this game, and it's a good throw down the field on a rope. And once again, the, the Aggies seem to be marching marching down the field. This could be Reggie Bruner's first catch of the game as we get inside the 40. Velva on the march again. This time an empty set. Eigelhard this time taking the direct snap. And to his right, maybe a gain of four. Getting those chunk yardage plays, setting up good yardage, manageable, manageable yardage on second down. I think that's kind of got to be a, a key for 
for Bishop Ryan is to, to keep the Aggies behind the sticks. You know, we saw that in the first the first couple of possessions. That was a struggle of staying in front of the sticks on the, on the Aggie side of things. But, you know, if, if they're able to run the ball and, and, and keep it in second and third and manageable, they're going to be really tough to, to contend with. Second and six. Shep taking the snap. Pressure. This time it hates two tacklers. This time getting up and back to the line of scrimmage. Oh, my goodness. How did he escape <laughs> that? Yeah. Uh, ben Shep's a heck of a player. That's, <laughs> that's, that's the answer there. Uh, a pretty impressive run for no gain. Drew's lock making the stop. And, and if you're Penn Chef, kind of grateful just to get back to, to you know third and five instead of being you know third and, and twelve potentially if if you got if you went down on first contact. Looked like it was Connor Harvey and Koy Okasin on that, and somehow he got away from both those players as we get another stoppage and we get the third and final timeout taken by Bishop Ryan in this first half. Looks like Koy Okasin was running out the field. He had something. He was dealing with. Wasn't sure if it was medical or anything, but he seems to be back on the field and okay. Might have been an equipment issue of some sort. For yeah, Coy. one of those things can, can be a helmet. Something like that. That chef run. My goodness. I don't know how he got away with that. He's Houdini sometimes out there. <laughs> He's gotten a lot stronger, too. I think a, a lot bigger frame over the years, and, and, and that paired with the, the speed and athleticism can be uh, uh, not easy to, to, to stop. Even when, when you're, you get home, you do the the hard work of getting past your your one on one block and trying to make the the sack is obviously not easy. It's a good night of football as we we're in the low 40s here, a little bit of chill, but this feels like North Dakota football now as we hit into October, our first Friday in October, and just a couple weeks before the playoffs get going, and I know that'll be a lot of fun to cover as we get. Closer to Dakota Bowl, just over a month away, we'll be in the Fargo Dome. We've seen the contenders kind of kind of separate themselves, and and now it's it's a matter of seeding of who's going to play where and when, and and all the the logistics over these next couple weeks here for for nine man and eleven a football. Jeff taking a handoff to Bodine, busts ahead into the second level, gets a by some tacklers, and he's gone into the end zone. How about four for Hank Bodine? He already has the triple crown. Call this the quadruple crown for Hank Bodine, a 33-yard scamper, just able to get past the first level. And then when he get, when he gets ahead of steam down the field like that, man, he's just so tough to take down. And and Aggie's starting to, to open up a lead here. He made two guys miss in open space, and then had nobody around him for 10 yards. How elusive Hank Bodine can be is is quite a marvel. Melba will go for two. Shep in the shotgun. Quick fadeaway pass. Almost a one-handed grab by Reggie Bruner, but he can't haul it in. So we remain a 20-point margin for Velva now here in the second quarter. Is Schwan able to win the one-on-one -on -one battle and not allow the two-point try? It's still a 20-point game here in the second quarter. Bishop Ryan will get the ball to start the second half, so... Is this one of those situations where you think about a six-minute drive and really try to milk this clock? I know it's been tough sledding against this Velvet team, or do you just take points any way you can? Yeah, I think you, you, you need points. I think you need to, to put together a drive. At your time is not the concern. I think at this point it's more of, okay, we need to get some positive things go, going, get, a, get another drive going. We saw them make some positive plays and, and really start to threaten there on that last drive. You're looking for more of the same on this drive, and obviously – Capping off with points, and wherever that's at time-wise, I think you live with that. Velva, the clinching situation tonight is a win, and they officially have the region title. They will be a one seed out of this region going into the playoffs. Bishop Ryan, on the other hand, a little bit more of a thick situation. They're fighting for a home field potential first home game of the playoffs in that first round right now. They're tied with the Lax Burlington, who beat them last week on a Thursday night. So DLB right now, the inside track to potentially host a playoff game. Certainly work to do after that, that big loss to um, DLB. That was a really close game back and forth, 14-8. to eight, uh, Defensive struggle there. And, yeah, the these games, as we get later and later into the season, the, the seemingly more implications they have in, in, in every game. And, and this one especially has the, those implications as well. You know, Bishop Ryan slotted to the – 
a three spot out of that region four could potentially face a, a Shiloh Christian in the first round. Down in Bismarck would be a fun game to see there as the kick is away. Right up past the 25 to about to 28-yard line. And that's where Bishop Ryan will take over. With Hayden Say on the carry in return. 5.56 to go, 26-6. Melva ahead, 26 unanswered for the Aggies after Bishop Ryan Lyons jumped ahead 6 to nothing. Jet Lundin, one play, 50 yards. And nothing much after that for Bishop Ryan. Takes the snap. Pumps, rolling to his left, sees some space, gets some blocks, got first down, tripped away there. Nice chase down by Hank Bodine, but it's first down yardage for Jet Lundin on the run. Yeah, that was that's what makes uh, can make Jet Lundin so so stuff so tough to stop. Is is he, he's a, a dual threat certainly, uh, not a design run, but uh, just doing a good job ad libbing and picking up a first down in a 13 yard gain. Quality play there for Bishop Ryan. Hasn't been many pl uh, penalties for Bishop Ryan. It's just been big time plays behind the line that has gotten Velva off the field on defense. Lundin sees some pressure, evades, rolls left, throws across. Is it complete? No, incomplete. Incomplete intended for Connor Harvey. That was a, a nice job in, in the pocket for, for Jet Lundin, able to evade pressure. Had Kyle Volson right in his face. Fired downfield, but again, incomplete in a, another second down. So second and 10 after the incomplete pass. Still plenty of time before halftime here at Herb Parker Stadium. Bishop Ryan looking to get back on the board. Handoff Zwak, maybe two. Bring up third and long. It's been tough sledding on the, the handoffs for, for Zwak so far in this one. He said, uh, coming into this game, it's important uh, that not being scared of the opponent, not really looking too much into, oh, oh goodness, we're playing the number one team in the state, but just you know, playing free and, and just doing doing what they do best. And that, that has worked worked at the start, but it's really been tough sledding since then. Lundin calling a potential blocker for Zwak as he takes the snap. Pressure up the middle, this time running ahead. He's got enough for a first down across midfield. Pushed out at the 45. Was pushed out by Reggie Bruner, but a first down for Bishop Ryan. Good job on the ad lib once again, and it's just finding what works, finding what, what's going to move the sticks. And once again, it's the legs of Jet Lundin getting off for another first down. We're back in Velva territory. The one they got here the last time, they had to punt a three and out after that. So we'll see if they can do much more with 429 to go. In this first half, Lundin empty set this time. Motion man. Going to swing it out. Caught and brought ahead. That's Drew Zwak on the swing pass up ahead and a gain of three or so. I think you can call that a run, the backwards pass. It was, a handoff. it was a backwards pass, so yes. <laughs> Another run for Zwak. Yes. <laughs> now, nowadays, whenever you see that, you're like, oh, is he going to throw? I don't know if he's walking throw. Good job by Velva on swarming on that play right away, though, to limit the damage. Another empty sweat set this time. Another snap. Lundin this time taking it himself. Up ahead, almost to the 35. Going to be short of the first down marker. Maybe about a yard and a half shy. Bring up third and short. Always, always nice to have a, a player who's going to fall forward on runs. It's tough to, to have when you're, you're a defense, when, when, it, when a guy's able to kind of finish those runs and, and pick up a couple extra yards. And a nice job there for uh, Jet Lundin doing that there. Lions looking for some points before the halftime buzzer. It's been an eventful first half in this one, to say the least. Ten on the play clock. Lundin. In motion, Harvey. Makes the handoff, has the option, 
Pitch announces walk. Almost hit behind the line, but gets enough for a first down just to evade the tackler. We do have a penalty marker, though. We will check the flag. We'll triple option, fake the handoff inside, and, and just work on, on the, the speed option to the outside and get it to Zwak fighting through that initial contact. We may have a hold on the Lions. You know, an illegal procedure. So that'll bring the ball back five yards. I think about pretty... You'd say maybe an obvious passing situation, but maybe if you're Eric Knutson, you see this as a, a chance to get two plays, maybe get a run to make it back to the third manageable. Certainly a four-down territory here as they're past midfield. Right in that Minot State Beaver. Lundin, back to pass, throws outside, almost connects with Zwak, incomplete. Now will bring a fourth down. Trying to make it to the outside, incomplete. And Zwak's slow to get up. Limping off. to the huddle. Should be something on the lower end there. Chef was in on the coverage. Zwak stays in. Clearly in some pain, though. Bishop Ryan has no timeouts. Fourth and eight. Lundin, back to pass. Pressure in his face, ad-libbing to his right, throws down the field. Does he have a man? Is that caught? Incomplete. It was almost picked off, actually, in on the coverage. It was Trey Eigelhart nearly had the interception, but it'll be a turnover on downs, and Velva takes over 2.30 to go. Field position-wise, that actually works out better uh, to not come up with that interception on fourth down. And now the Aggies got two and a half minutes to maybe uh, punch another one in before the halftime. Zwak getting subbed off the field now. Still in some pain. We'll see what his status is moving forward. Obviously a key player on both sides of the ball. Hope he's able to, well, able to continue playing, but we'll have to see as this one goes along. So 2.30 to go. Velva looking for more points before the half. A little flip pass to Bruner. Bouncing out to his right. Gets past the line of scrimmage. Bouncing outside. Being a five or so. Second down. Love those pop passes if you're a quarterback. It's a, kind of a free completion. The stats see it as a completion either way. Maybe that's why Ben Shep's completing 85% <laughs> of his passes right now Certainly on helps. the season. Certainly helps, and, and, and all these weapons he's able to, to, to get the ball out to, and all they're able to do with the motion and the, the swing passes. Uh, in a lot of ways, he's just a, a facilitator, not not needing to do too much uh, to, to move the chains and, and keep this, this offense rolling. The push out of bounds, stop the clock, so 222 as this play gets going. It's outside to Bruner, who gets cut down. Nice tackle by Jay Schwan. On the play. Juan saying no on this time. Able to follow follow Bruner on the, the motion and not allowing him to, to get, get much yardage. We'll bring a third down. Velva still has all three of their timeouts. It'll be third and seven. Chef shotgun. Fumbles the snap, picks it up, throws over the head of Bruner. That play was blown up from the start. Yeah, obviously the, the snap a, a big part, something we take for granted. But us people who have played center before know you got to have a good snap. And it looks like Shep just kind of bobbled it there. Seen him make plays after bobbling snaps previously. He had that our, our number one play of the week yeah. on, on, on one of those, a uh, deep throw to to Hank Bodine, who scooped up a, a long completion in that Stanley game. Very Mahomes-like. Yes. <laughs> this time, no dice. No dice this time, and Belleville will punt for the first time tonight. Back to receive. Is Hayden Say. Shep just getting it away. Say up ahead. Gets it on the fly, and immediately met by Bruner. And Bishop Ryan will take over with 1.30 to go. 
their own 27. We'll see what they can do with no timeouts. It looks like Drew Zwak is back in the game, so good to see that. After he was hobbling a little bit after that last possession for Bishop Ryan. So, back in at running back. Certainly a big part to just this whole team on, on both sides of the ball. And yeah, glad to see him uh, making his return here before half. Lundin with 1.30 to go across the field. Cots, nice grab by Bryce Babetto. First down, right at the first down marker. We stop the clock at 1.23. They'll set the ball and get the clock running. Certainly go hurry up here. Yeah, only two-minute drill time. You're going as quick as you can in, in trying to, to get in a, in a spot to, to maybe grab some points if you're lucky. Lundin, back, pressure, rolling left, going deep. But there's a man there, and it's going to be picked off by Velva. It's picked off. A turnover there. Trying to see the number. Might be Reggie Bruner on the play. We're going to call it Reggie, Reggie Bruner's INT, his second of the year. Yeah, just a good play down the field. Uh, you know, obviously not much time to work, not much time to, to get something going. Jet Lundin taking a shot, taking a chance, but Bruner was there to, to make the play. Now you got 102 and three timeouts in your close to midfield, so now Velva's suddenly in the opportunity to score here. Yeah, maybe dial up a couple plays and just, uh, again, you can never complain with uh, added points before the break. Single safety set for Bishop Ryan. A handoff. This time it's Bodine that's met at the line. Not Koyokes much doing on that first play. Again, Koyoka in, in, in the backfield making some plays. And, uh, a play you, you, that stands out, uh, obviously, on, on this, this Lions team. Trying to go out with, a, with a, a bang as a senior. Still have all three timeouts, but now we get under 40 seconds. Second and 10. Shep this time. Pressure off the edge. Gets up ahead. Makes a man miss. Dancing around. Gets the first down. We might get a timeout now with 21 seconds. And, yes, we'll get a timeout by Velva. Two remaining for the Aggies with 21 seconds left in Bishop Ryan territory. Yeah, again, the, the, the ad lib this time from Ben Shep making the play. Able to get a good 12 yard gain, stepping up, and then he'll, he'll take it himself. How frustrating is it to be a pass rusher and try to go after Ben Shep and just can't quite get there in time? Oh, it's so tough. I mean, luckily, only, I only played both ways uh, very sparingly. I think I played. Uh, three snaps on defense. <laughs> I was mainly the center. I'm just get the ball back there and, and, and make my down block. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's got to be so tough. Uh, you know, you're worrying about so much as a, as a defender. And to, to see a potential sack be erased and, and turned into a gain, it's just, yeah, it's, a, it's so demoralizing and, and tough for a, a defense to, to try and stop that for sure. So if you're 21 seconds left, if you're a Matt Weidler, what are you drawing up here? Because – I mean, Ben Shep's a kicker, but uh, minimal sets, to say the least, on uh, kicking this uh, season for Shep. Certainly could kick, could hit one. We have not that much win tonight as you, you take a look at some of the flags on the uh, goalpost. Nothing doing as wind-wise tonight, so good passing conditions as Shep takes the snap. Stepping up in the pocket, connects with Bruner inside the 20, bounced out of bounds at the 11. That'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go. Still two timeouts for Velva. Yeah, I think that's that's a good answer. Run some some crossers. Get your one of your playmakers kind of you know working up across the field and a good play from from Shep to, to make the, the play and, and get out of bounds and stop the clock. You say a hand up by Bodine here with the two timeouts remaining. I mean, worked what four times? Could he get five in the first half? That'd be incredible. <laughs> Take Bodine, already four touchdowns to start this game. He's been all of Velva's points tonight. Seven seconds on the play clock. Twelve to go on the game clock. Shep, back to pass. Pressure in his face, throws, bobbled, incomplete. Oh, no, they're going to call it a grab. 
Call timeout. Jokum with the Fox connection. Running, now now we're going to get an incomplete pass, and we're going to discuss how much time is left on the clock because the ref came in and signaled incomplete. I got to be what? I want to say that play seconds. lasted about five or six seconds on the clock there, so we're going to see where they set it to. Obviously, at least time to run one, maybe two plays left in this half. Waiting the ref's signal here. It's more of a communication of, hey, we want this amount of time left on the clock. There was certainly time left when that ball yes. hit the ground. Yep. So Melville will have another shot at a play before the half here. You, you, you got timeouts if Melville Drake and Ms. Garrison you could, you could run. Did plenty of quirky things happen in this first half already. Eight seconds. Eight seconds back on the clock for Velva. So maybe two plays of the end zone if you run it quick enough. Maybe, uh, maybe dial up a little fade to a Kyle Volson or Reggie Bruner. Maybe another one of those pop passes to get to the sideline. Those are all options there. So eight seconds to go. 26 to 6. Valva looking for more before the halftime break. Shep in the shotgun. And now we got a penalty. We might have a false start. We will have a false start, so push it back five yards. That's a big play right there. That does complicate things a little bit. Now we're going from, from the 11 now to the, the 16. Got a little bit more. That, that's a big five yards. Every yard critical here in, in the red zone, obviously. And only two plays to, to dial up what you want to do. You're trying to get more points before the halftime. Bishop Ryan has getting good pressure on Shep. It just hasn't gotten home. Shep been really good at eluding that pressure. We'll see what he dials up. You got Bruner and Eigelhart at the bottom of your screen. Two top targets for Velva. Shep this time going to the left side, though. Picked off by Drew Zwak. And nothing doing for Velva. At the halftime break, Drew Zwak preventing points there on the INT. That's only Ben Shep's second pick of the year thrown. And Zwak makes him pay. Yeah, obviously close quarters down near the, near the goal line. And Shep's just trying to fit one in into his running back, Hank Bodine. That would have been his fifth. First receiving touchdown, but ultimately he's walk able to, to be in, in the zone, in the right spot, and just step in front of it and, and get some positive vibes for his team going into halftime. And it looks like we do have zeros on the clock, so we're going to say this is halftime. A 26 to 6 lead for Velva. We will take a break, and we'll be right back with more from the Dakota CW.
Welcome back to Minot. As you see on that scoreboard, it is halftime. 26-6, Velva, the number one team in class single A, leading the way over Bishop Ryan. The Penny Trophy on the line. Both teams at 18 and 18 against each other. So bragging rights for sure on the line here as we hit the halftime break. Let's take a look at some scores from around the state as we settle in here before the second half. Century right now leading in a big time lead over Legacy, 34 to 7. As we start our check of the AAA scores, another ranked battle though over out east. Shanley and Davies tied at 21 at the halftime break. A little bit of surprise there. Shanley undefeated at that level. How about Mandan and Dickinson? A good interclass matchup. Dickinson. Hanging in there with the Braves, 13 to 7. Mandan leading at home at the half. Fargo South at home against St. Mary's. St. Mary's putting up a good fight against the Bruins, 17-10 right now. Fargo South leading at the halftime break. We know Minot and Bismarck played last night. The Magi escaping the bowl with a 26-23 victory to stay undefeated in the West. We'll have their game next week against Williston. How about West Fargo, Cheyenne, and West Fargo? A good rivalry battle with Cheyenne leading 26 to 12 at the half. Take a look at some double A scores. Jamestown 14 to nothing over Valley City. That one in Jamestown. And as we know, the Dickinson score as well. So take a look at some other single A scores from around the region. Of course, this one in Region 3 between Bishop Ryan and Velva. Other scores. Stanley leading by 20, 26 to 6. Out at South Prairie Max. Dickinson Trinity looking to stay undefeated over at Hart River. They're up 39 to nothing. So well on their way to another victory. That one in the second half. We'll look at some other scores. Kildeer and Buell in a big time battle for potential playoff implications. Kildeer right now up by six, 22 to 16. Start of the third quarter. ELB all over Ray Powers Lake, 38 to nothing. That one in the third quarter as well. Take a look at Nedros up 22 to six over Kenmare. Those are the scores updated in 11 single A. And then let's jump down to the nine man level. Napoleon over Richardson right now, 38 to 16. South Border, who won the region last week after a loss by Kidder County, they're up 44 to six. Looking to stay undefeated on the year and stay at the number one spot in nine man, 44 to six in the third quarter. Over at other scores, North Prairie up on Nelson County, 16 to 12. That one in the second half, a little bit of a shocking score. It's Linton HMB 22 over New Salem, 22 to nothing right now at the halftime break. New Salem hoping to avoid its third straight loss. Not looking good so far for the Holstein. Mohall up 22 to six over Surrey right now. That one starting of the third quarter. Of course, you have New Rockford Cheyenne all over St. John, 50 to nothing. West Hope over Berthold right now, 36 to nothing. That one just past the halftime break as well. Central McLean, 20, 46 to 24 over Divide County. Grant County in Grant County Flasher at their homecoming against Beach, 32 to 14 to start that one. At the halftime break, Headinger County, who's been on fire since the First couple games of the year over heading or Scranton six to nothing. And those are your scores at the moment. We'll take another break. We'll be back to analyze this first half of football between Velva and Bishop Ryan. Stay with us right here on the Dakota CW. Okay. How's that? Yeah, we're we're not gonna
Welcome back to Herb Parker Stadium, our second of three games this year on the Dakota CW. Velva leading 26-6 over Bishop Ryan. And the score really indicative of not how this game started, but how it continued after Bishop Ryan scored after their first play from scrimmage on offense. And then it's been all Velva since then. Tristan, let's talk about Velva to start with. You know, what has been the big picture uh, standout you of how they've been able to respond to Bishop Ryan and what they've been able to put together on the field after that first drive. Well, they didn't really show any, um, I guess, signs of, of being knocked on the ropes. It was just kind of right back to work once they, they got, got the ball after going down 6 nothing. You had that first drive, of course, where it was a, a fourth and two. They're, they're going for it. Big stop by the Lions. And then, of course, as you mentioned, that, that first touchdown, Jet Lundin, 50 yards out on the ground. It was just an empty set. He found a, a lane, and, and he was off to the races. Uh, but since then, it was just a lot of, I think, a, a lot of passing yards, if you looked at the stats, the, doing most of the, the gains uh, for, for Velvet Drake and it was Garrison. Uh, but that was really moving, moving the ball down the field the rest of the way. Uh, but then, of course, Hank, <laughs> Hank Bodine, the guy who uh, is pun punching in the touchdowns for, for Velva, uh, four of them in that first half. And... You know, those were those were there was a 33 yard one, uh, but then the the two of them from inside the five. The first one 19 yards out and one PAT or two point try, good to go. So that brings us to a 26 to six halftime score, and really just the the Aggies settling in, doing what they do best, and keeping it simple, like Coach Weidler wants them to do, and not really doing too much, being too fancy. Just a lot of we're gonna. We're going to get our playmakers in space. We're going to get our playmakers like Hank Bodine uh, just, you know, ahead of steam down the field and, and, and try and stop us. Yeah, Hank Bodine, four touchdowns. And he almost had a fifth, but uh, Drew Zwack said otherwise on that final possession uh, right before the half. If you're Bishop Ryan, you're, you have some flashes of good plays, but uh, after that first touchdown, uh, the offense has been stalling in Velvet territory. What is the message your coach uh, ahead of this second half you do get the ball to start this second half if you're Bishop Ryan what is Eric Knudsen saying to his team right now yeah, I mean we, we mentioned the, the responding from adversity being a hallmark of how this team wants to do things I think you look to, to your, your upperclassmen and in your offensive line where you, you have a, a size advantage in, in certain spots and an experience advantage I think uh, as well especially when it comes to going up against a pretty new uh, Velvet Drake Animus Garrison offensive line. I think you're looking looking to your, your upperclassmen, your, your seniors on senior night especially, and you're going to need those guys to make some plays, step up, and, and just try and try and stay in it. And, and really, you just got to take it one play at a time. You can't, I guess you, you can't look at the, the scoreboard too much. You just got to go out and, and, and play your game and, and try to try to win each play one after another. Bishop Bryan, you know, they, uh, they enter this game four and three on the year. A team that has had some close battles with Velva in the past. It certainly wasn't what it's going to be like last time as we get a big touchdown run from our halftime entertainment. But, you know, it's certainly a 14-12 game last year. This has not been like that defensive battle. Uh, we've had really chilly but nice conditions tonight. We talked about the weather, you know, being kind of a factor with the first cold game. But uh, overall, both teams have been able to throw the ball well in this one. Uh, it's just been Velva that's been stringing together few more plays than Bishop Ryan. Yeah, I think if, if you're the Lions, you also want to get do what the, the Aggies have done of, of getting their playmakers in space and, and letting them make plays, make defenders miss. We haven't seen a ton of that. Haven't seen a lot of Gus Englehart. Haven't seen uh, too much of, of uh, Drew Zwack getting downfield. And, you know, I, I know this, um, this Lions team, they like to run some screens. They like to get the defense over pursuing. Obviously, I think this is a, an Aggies team that is playing a lot of sound uh, you know, fundamentally smart football, but if you, if you can ke catch them and catch them kind of rushing you too much, if you can get over the top to Drew's walk and, and let him get, get some yardage down the field, that's been a, something they've looked to at times this season. So I think that, that might be a, a part of uh, the, the play calling and the, the design of the offense. This is the closest game Belva's really been in at, at that first half. They've really gone away with some teams in the first half, but really this is the first, it was the first tough test Bishop Ryan, though, trying not to let this game get away from them. Uh, 
what do you expect them to do in the first half or in this uh, first drive of the second half? Yeah, I think it's just going to be you're going to have to throw the ball. You're going to have to get um, get them things going uh, for for your, your players, and you and you want the uh, to start to kind of get some get some positive vibes going. Uh, maybe it is you know dialing up a you know a play action and you know, a throw down the field. I mean, we haven't we haven't really called Ramsey Wall's name that much. You, you get six six seven target uh, a guy who can win some some uh, 50 50 balls. So maybe that's something you look to uh, if you're Eric Knudsen. But uh, it's good going to be a, a case of getting the yards where you can and, and starting to try and turn the tide uh, if you're able to do so. Line's been playing pretty well for Bishop Ryan overall. I don't think Jet Ludeen's been sacked at all tonight. Uh, so the pressure hasn't been really getting there for Velva. It's just connecting on those big plays. What do you what have what have you stood out to you most about how Bishop Ryan's been able to protect Ludeen? Yeah, I mean that's that, that hasn't been the problem. Um, you know we've seen we've seen Jet Ludeen, you know, miss on a couple throws down the field and, and that's another thing, you know, he Talking to him before the game this week, you know he he knows that he's got to be able to execute um, on on offense, and that's been a big difference in in their losses versus their wins. Obviously, quality of opponent is certainly factored into it when you look at um, you know Bishop Ryan's kind of tail of the tape this year in in the games they've won versus lost. But you know offensive execution is a, a big thing, and and just keeping the ball moving, and and that helps out your defense too if you're able to keep them off the field, keep them rested. And that was obviously a big problem in that first quarter where it was two plays, the, the touchdown, and then the, the fumble for the Lions. Their defense was on the field a lot. So I think if, if you can control the ball, control the clock, and, and just try, try and stay ahead of the sticks, that's going to help a lot of things out for Bish Bryan if, if they're able to do that here starting up the third quarter. Both teams have been bit by the turnover bug. Uh, Bishop Bryan throwing an INT, and uh, you mentioned that fumble. So Jill Lundin with two. Uh, turnovers in that first half. Of course, Shep threw his sec only his second INT of the year in the red zone uh, at the end of the first half there, uh, going to Bodine. So um, it's not been perfect football, but it's been competitive football, to say the least. Bishop Ryan has a chance to get back into it as we get ready for our second half kickoff. Velva going to kick it right to left on your screen. Bishop Ryan looks to do something with the ball and get back into this one down 20. Maybe a reason for positivity as well. Uh, Drew Zwak mentioned to me uh, earlier this week that he says that the Lions are a second-half team. So, I don't know, Drew. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Velva's a second-half defense as well. It's been pretty incredible to see what they've been doing all year. As it's kicked away, and they're going to be out of bounds. So, immediately, we got a penalty. We will kick out of bounds, and that will bring the ball up for a good field position start. For Bishop Ryan on this first drive out of the second half. So an illegal procedure on the kickoff. Sets the ball at the 35-yard line. Bishop Ryan will get going from there. A 50-yard touchdown, the only scoring on the Game for Bishop Ryan, a Jet Lundin jetting to the end zone. He was gone on one play, but after that, it's been nothing doing for Bishop Ryan. They've moved the ball pretty well. They just have not been able to capitalize when it's been time to score. Lundin faking the handoff, throwing it deep, deep shot, but way over his intended target. That's Bryce Vibeto. That was certainly well covered up uh, by Matt Jockham of, of Velvet Drake and Moose Garrison. And uh, I, I, you like the idea of kind of having the defense get stretched a little bit, even if it doesn't result in a, a completion. But obviously, you want to get some get some positive vibes going, get get some first downs. If you are Bishop Ryan, we've seen Lundin test his uh, deep ball three or four times during this game, but has yet been able to connect on that. He's been doing it better inside the numbers as he hands it off to Zwak, but he's met immediately by a pair of Velva Aggies. Well, Selzler that is there on the initial contact, so a gain of one, bring a third and long. Yeah, good job on, the, on, that, on that defensive stop there. Just the linebacker is able to get downfield or get into the gaps, and again, uh, not much running room for, for Drew's block. So a third down play, Velva fans hoping for a stop here. An incompletion on the first down, a one-yard gain. Zwak on second down, brings up third and nine. 
Bishop Ryan needing some points to get back into this one. Empty set, five wide receivers bringing the pressure. Lundeen, he's sacked. Big time sack behind the line. It's Selzler that gets in there, and that'll bring a fourth down. Just multiple waves of defenders coming in. Just a great pass rush for the Aggies. And third third and longer, able to pin the ears back and, and make the sack there. They really brought the house on that play. They knew that if they could get to them, they wouldn't be no completion there on third down, and so that'll bring up a punting situation. Lundeen, the punter, getting it away, kind of a rugby-style kick. It rolls down to the 40, down to the 30. What an incredible punt by Chet Lundeen on a rugby-style punt to bring it down to the 23. A really nice boot by the quarterback there. Chet does a lot. I mean, he can punt, he can throw, he can run. I mean, in the spring, he, he golfs. You know, he was a state qualifier, one of the top golfers in the region. Plays baseball. This Bryant team that went to state. Always seems like he's doing something. One of the guys who just gets involved and does a lot of things for his his school. And now he's out there playing safety as well. <laughs> so here we go. It's going to be Eigelhard on the direct snap. Going to bring it out to his light, right side. Trips himself up and falls forward for about a gain of three. It's Trey Eigelhart taking it himself. Valva looking for more points, up 20. Just the start of the third quarter. An eventful game for both teams. The trophy on the line. And before the play, we got a penalty and a false start. Bring him back five yards. Make it second and 12. I also mentioned, you know, both. Both teams with, with first-year coaches, and obviously it's been a, a seamless transition, as we mentioned, for, for Matt Weidler. And you know, Eric Knudsen, he, he's, he mentioned to me earlier in the week that a lot of those first few games was learning which positions certain guys need to be playing in and, and looking back on those first few games and thinking, okay, why, do I, why did I have that kid in that position, et cetera. And at this point of the season, it uh, feels like he's got the, the guys in the right spot. Ben Shep under center. And... What do we got here? Leave encroachment. Troy Okerson maybe a little early on that. <laughs> a little excited. On that rush. Yep. Encroachment on Okerson and bring it back forward five yards. It's so simple. All the coaches say it all the time. But it is so hard in practice, you gotta watch the ball. Watch the ball. Don't let if you're a defender, defensive lineman especially, you're not listening to the snap count. It's hard, it's but you see even, even those guys in the NFL, they get they get beat on, on some of those hard counts. And uh, that was certainly the case there. Do you think that's a little frustration that he hasn't gotten the quarterback yet? He was a little antsy to get across the line that's, and get Shep? That's got to be part of it, at least for sure. Step back, swing pass incomplete. Nearly a backwards pass, but we call it incomplete. Always always wonder on those, those kind of lateral throws if that's going to be a, a fumble. But it looks like it was just a little bit forward on that. Hayden Say fell on it like he thought he was a backwards <laughs> pass, just to make sure. Play through the whistle. So it'll bring up third down. Third and seven. 26-6. Start of the third. Shep calling out protection. Takes the snap. Plenty of time, unloading it deep, but plenty of defenders back there guarding Bruner. It was Jet Lundeen on the coverage, incomplete, brings up fourth down. A lot of guys in, in that vicinity right around the, the midfield point trying to take a shot downfield. There were defenders in the area. The Lions get a stop, a three and out, and they're getting the ball back. So a good defensive possession for Bishop Ryan, hoping to get back into this one. Certainly a good response out of the half. And now, now you're, you're the defense. You're saying, hey, offense, we did our job. Now you do yours. Jeff, just a sky-high punt that doesn't go very far at all. Sits at the 40. Almost hit a player of Bishop Ryan. But instead, it's down at the 39-yard line of Velva. Fantastic field position for Bishop Ryan's offense. Only what? 11-yard punt? An 11-yard punt. It was 
a sky high punt. It actually almost hit uh, one of the Bishop Ryan players. That could have been trouble. A little, a little antsy on that punt. Saw a little bit of pressure coming potentially, but obviously you got to stand in and, and deliver a, a punt that goes down the field. But hey, a, a prime opportunity here for Bishop Ryan to, to maybe get some more points on the board. 39 yard line, Bishop Ryan. Looking for points, needing some points here in the third quarter. Jet Lundin bouncing to the left. Saw he had a plenty of room that way. Gets past the first down marker. And just near the 20-yard line, we're going to say he is at the 21-yard line. A gain of 18 on the play for Jet Lundin. He had plenty of pressure in front of him and somehow skipped over to the left side and jetted ahead. That's been some of the, the line's best offense has been let Jet Lundin get in space, let him roll out, and, and let him take it himself. And that's what's got him knocking on the door of the red zone. First and ten, Bishop Ryan. Man in motion. Lundin this time taking it himself. Doesn't get much. At the 18-yard line, gain of three, second and seven. Now it's here where you, you run a couple, a couple of run plays. You got the defense Maybe scooching up just a little bit. You know, not, maybe not reading their keys as, as well as they should. Maybe here's where you look to a little screenplay and, and use the aggressiveness against them. We'll, we'll see if, if Bishop Ryan maybe looks to something like that. Ryan in the pistol formation. Lundin drops the ball. Oh. Fumble. Who's got it? Looks like it's Velva football. They say they do. I don't know what happened there. Jet must have just lost the ball as he was looking to throw. He might have pump faked it. Down. I don't know. I don't know. He was maybe trying to tuck it and, and, and fake. But it looked like he dropped the ball as he was looking to pump fake, and that's a crucial turnover for the Lions. Yeah, a couple positive plays. Obviously, getting the great field position, give it right back is just uh, such a tough thing for, for this defense to deal with. The third turnover forced by the Velva defense. Had 14 turnovers forced coming into this one. Now it's the offense taking over once again. Shep handing it off. Bodine bouncing out to the left. Got plenty uh -oh. of space. And shoestring tackle there. Nicely done. Can't quite get the number on that one guy. Jay Schwan, maybe? Yes. <laughs> There we go. Made the right call. It's hard to see with these Bishop Ryan numbers. <laughs> Jace, Sw Jace uh, Schwann's made a couple pretty good tackles out there. Yeah, that, that, that was a, a big tackle to, to save the yardage. Obviously a, a big gain for, for Bodian again, but we saw if he, if he can get downhill and make a couple guys miss, it can turn into a long touchdown run in a hurry. So uh, a good play to kind of to limit the damage there. So a first down. A big run by Bodian. Jeff this time, pitching it out to Bodine. Jumping up ahead. Down across, maybe a gain of nine. Schwan again in on the tackle. Schwan's everywhere in that free safety position. And you know, typically you say something with your defense of, oh, you don't want you don't want their uh, your your DBs making a lot of tackles. That's a little bit of the hallmark of the, of this defense is really utilizing the, their safeties, their corners, and their linebackers in, in more typical or in different ways than they've been used to in the past. Shep and shotgun, second and one. Another pitch to Bodine. Patient, but this time swallowed by Coy Okerson. He was in on that one, and that's a loss. Maybe the first negative play by Bodine on a rush there of this game. Yeah, good play there from Coy Okerson again, uh, coming up with the TFL, and that's a, a sweet play, so the the, the offensive line is trying to get those reach blocks, trying to trying to kind of hold the edge for, for Bodine to get around and, and, and find a hole. But obviously, uh, o Okuson able to get around that, get in front of it, and, and make the play in the backfield. So bring up third and two. Kind of a critical third down for Bishop Ryan's defense right now to get off the field and get the ball back. This time it's... Oh, Bodine throwing it out to Shep, who Shep throws it ahead, and it's complete to Eigelhart. So we got the double double pass going on here with Bodine to Shep to Eigelhart for a first down. Well, that goes against the keep it simple. 
But hey, you got to throw in a wrinkle here or there, and that wrinkle, multiple pass, seems like we're seeing more and more across the game at all levels of those those second the second passes behind the line, and uh, the Aggies utilizing that there for first down. Into Bishop Ryan territory. Approaching five minutes to go in this third quarter. Velva on the move. Up 26 to 6. Sheff. Deep drop back. Has a man in his face. Steps to his right. Rolls. Going to take it himself. Up ahead. Past the 40. Down to about the 37. A quarterback keeper for Sheff. He kind of reminds me of when he kind of goes out and rolls out. He looks like Josh Allen a little bit. <laughs> like looking to run. I can I can see that. It's just uh, the subtle, subtle movements. Just kind of a, it, it, he gets downfield, Josh Allen, a, a guy that's tough to tackle, and certainly Ben Shep is as well. And Shep, I don't think he shies away from from some hits. And we got another penalty, it looks like. It might be a personal foul. Sportsmanlike conduct. All right, unsportsmanlike conduct, so that moves the ball even further for Velva. Not a good penalty by Bishop Ryan there. Yeah, certainly a, a, a tough one to take there. Now, again, right on the 22, once, once the Aggies get downhill, the Lions got to see if they can can uh, you know bow their necks here. Step under center. Might be a Bodine run here, and it is. And this time again, tackled behind the line. In on it is Cade Okasin this time. A little brotherly battle in the middle. See who makes more of an impact on this game. Yeah, <laughs> between the Okasins. Can't have too many Okasins out there if if you're your Bishop Ryan for sure. Must be special to play with your brother this year, obviously with Coy and Cade. Cade a sophomore, Coy a senior, so really the last chance they get to play with each other this season. So it must be special for them. Step looking to the sideline. Second and ten. Takes a snap, handing it off Bodine up the middle, patient. Breaking tackles, getting to the second level. Nearly a first down. Boy, he seems to shed tackles left and right. I've, he is a tough guy to bring down. That physical style, as the game wears on, it gets harder and harder to, to tackle him if you're, you're trying to play defense. And that physical style start, starting to maybe take some, uh, some body blows to the Lions defense. Velva, a meticulous drive here. Started at the 22-yard line. And now they are in red zone territory here. Just at the 13, looking to add more points. Five on the play clock. Shep taking the snap, drop back. Looks to completion to Jokum down inside the five. And he's going to be down at the two-yard line, another first down. Tough play to defend there. You got the, the post going into the end zone and just kind of the flat hanging out there. And Jokum just sitting there underneath and being the open guy for, for Ben Shep here, now inside the five. We call him number five for Bodine right now. Uh, why not? He, he's in the backfield all alone. Who else could it be? Wildcat situation for Bodine. Takes it, bouncing out, and he does. Number five for Hank Bodine. Five touchdowns on the night. Brings the Aggies to 32-6. to six. Down the field, and once again, inside the five, it's been the, the thing that hasn't, there's, there hasn't been a reason to not go to Hank Bodine inside the five. It's worked every time. And now he's going to line up in Wildcat at the two. Let's see if he can do this again. Add two more for Bodine. Same yes! Play. How about that? How can you stop that? They, they, <laughs> it worked on the touchdown, and they said, yeah, you know, we'll just run that again. And it worked. Big Bodine certainly making a bid for our player of the game tonight. I don't think there's anybody else who's <laughs> come close to this. What a great night for Hank Bodine on the ground. Five touchdowns total for the junior. He entered this game with 15. And now he has five more. Number 20, up to 20. 20 touchdowns total, receiving and running. So a, th a third of his season total added on to the now 20 total touchdowns. A an impressive night for sure. So 247 and Bishop Ryan and Dyer need to some points quick here. Want to avoid the running clock situation as a team leading by 30 
in the second half will bring up the running clock. We saw that situation last week with South Border and New Salem. So we'll kick off here at Herb Parker Stadium. It's going to be picked up just past the 20 yard line and going to be met immediately. Selzler there in on the tackle. So that's where Bishop Ryan will take over. 25-yard line is where we're going to spot the ball. Definitely not great as, as good of field position as you had previously on that last drive. Again, trying to respond from the, the turnover on the Jet Lundin fumble. Three turnovers today for the offense for Bishop Ryan. The man in motion, handing it off. Swack, swack, oh. drops it. It's going to be grabbed by the offensive lineman there. Bennett Warren falling on the ball. Nearly a fourth turnover. Uh, just uh, kind of a bobbled play, bobbled handoff. And it's, it's kind of the first rule of football. you got to take care of it. Certainly been a bit of a struggle here of late in the third quarter for the Lions. I didn't mean to put the stink on them by talking about their turnovers, but right there it happened. Yeah. My goodness. So second and 15 now. And a loss of five on the fumbled exchange. Lundin in the shotgun. Eat on the play clock. Englehart in motion. Pump. Time. Over the middle and through the hands of Bryce Babetto. Trying to work it. Outside, you had the, the motion man, Englehart, kind of motioning a couple different ways, trying to trying to create some space and a, a good kind of throw the other way. Nice kind of decision by by Jet to look look one way, not have the, the first option, and then look back to, to Bibetto, but uh, just ultimately uh, through his hands. So third and long. Rode a long one for a comeback for Bishop Ryan. Englehart in motion, high snap. Lundin bouncing back, Swack with the catch on the screen pass up ahead, but not nearly enough for the first down. A gain of six for Zwak on the reception. And they'll bring up fourth and nine. There's that screenplay I was talking about, but uh, ultimately a, a good job by the Aggies to kind of stay home and not over pursue. That's so tough to do uh, when you when you can see the the lineman just letting you through you. That's your natural instinct is to just go attack the quarterback, uh, but uh, a good job to kind of read it and, and follow the play. Looks like Bishop Ryan will punt it away here on fourth down, down 28 points. Lundin, rugby style, it was good the first time, and it continues to roll now down to past the 40, and it'll be picked up at the 37-yard line. Minute to go in this third quarter. Selva little bit of a slow start, but they've been off and running ever since. Namely Hank Bodine, off and running. <laughs> Bodine, into the end zone. Off and running. We're going to call his name a lot tonight on the Friday Night Frenzy for sure. <laughs> That'd be good... something wrong if we, we didn't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> check, on our, check on us if we... Yes. Call <laughs> us out. Yeah, exactly. Of course, we got a good Friday Night Frenzy coming up with a lot of games. From around the state, Shep swinging it out to Bodine. Bodine up ahead. Brought down nearly. The ball was nearly ripped out by uh, Drew's walk, uh, Drew's walk there. He's trying to at least rip it out and see if he can cause a turnover, but it is a first down on the, on the swing pass to Bodine. That's so tough for if, if you're – on the on the outside making the the block and and then you get the those those playmakers getting ahead of steam down the field uh, that can be re really really tough if you're not able to to kind of stop that first wave and and that's what the Aggies have been able to do is just get past that first wave of the defenders. Shep back to pass. He stumps it off to Bodine. Maybe a gain of 2, we'll say a gain of 1. Well, I hope you had Hank Bodine on your fantasy team tonight. Yeah. <laughs> 
get the, get the, the PPR in as well. You and I play each other in fantasy this week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> both four and zero. Something's got to give. I, th I know nobody wants to hear about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the most interesting thing: other people's <laughs> fantasy teams. We don't want to talk about Andrew and the truck setup or anything. Can we? No. <laughs> Not as good as last year. Exactly. Clock ticking down. One more play, probably before the end of this third quarter. Second and nine for Velva. And Oppo Dean following his blockers. Nothing doing really. Gain of one, maybe. And that'll end the third quarter. We are going to take a commercial break. We'll be right back with more Velva versus Bishop Ryan. Stay with us on the Dakota CW. Welcome back to Herb Parker Stadium, 34-6. Maggie's lead, third down and eight. Shep, time, stepping up, makes the pass, but met. And that'll bring up fourth down, maybe just a gain of one. And Bryce Vibeto on the tackle of Shep. That might bring up a punting situation for Velva. Vibeto, another one of those guys involved on, on both sides of the ball, making the play there, and might as well punt if you're Melvin Drake and Garrison, or you can you can go for it. I mean, you're you're in the driver's seat, so let's see what they dial up here. Certainly up 28. Uh, you can go for it and see if you can go for a kill shot here. Uh, get up 30 and get that running clock going and get out of here with a victory. Shep stepping back. Nice elusive move, throwing it deep. Going to be complete to Jokum, but see a flag in the backfield and for you especially if you see it as a lineman you think you know what happened there. and just the, the timing of the the official who threw it you saw the battle Luke Selzler and in Koi Okison kind of battling on, on the edge there uh, Luke Selzler in at left tackle and you, you had a, a tug at the jersey as, as Koi was making a uh, making a move at Shep and you saw the hold there and that's going to be the call to push the Aggies back well I'll push the back ball back and uh now I think we might be seeing a punting situation for Belva. Up 34-6 to six here in the fourth quarter. You see the line change. Hockey, yes. Signaling punt. Shep's second punt of the night. I'm going to punt it away to Aiden Say. Up and away. Middle of the field. Say oh, drops it. Ball's out. Who's got it? It's a fight for it. Jokum was there, and He's Jokum it. has it. So yeah. Matt Jokum recovering the muff punt there. That's such a, a tough play there where 
Dorsey was kind of a little too far back, trying to run up and, and make the grab, and obviously got the fingertips, and, and now the Aggies are, are again kind of knocking on the door of the, the running clock. That ball was wobbling a little bit. It had a little bit of a funny spin to it as it was in the air. It might have made it tougher to catch. I'll say, as a player, I'm glad one of the things I never had to do was return a punt, return a kick, because they, they make it look easy, but it, it can be so tough, I think, to just judge where the ball is going to go, how you got to do, you know, what are you doing a fair catch, do you let it go? There's a lot of things that those guys are trying to process as the ball is in the air. Wind certainly wasn't a factor tonight. <laughs> you look at any of the flags out here, nothing doing with wind, so... The Shep sets up on a first down, this time going deep to the end zone. Fight for the ball. Who's got it? Bruner. No, it is Reggie Bruner with the catch there. Oh, he, it was a big-time battle between the two, the uh, receiver and the uh, defender, and it, Bruner is slow. He's staying on the ground there after that catch. Might have the wind knocked out of him, honestly, with falling on that ball. Yeah, that, that was a heck of a play to just go up and grab it. I mean, something we've seen. Uh, a time or two this season. And once again, has the, the Aggies knocking on the door inside the five. And that's usually meant the Tank Odin time. What a big time throw and catch. Chef throwing a pretty ball to that one on one situation. Knew he had Bruner over there, the 6'1, 195 pound receiver. That's something you love as a playmaker when, you're, when your quarterback is able to, to get it in a spot where pretty much only you can get it and go up and go up in the air and, and show off your athleticism and, and your ball skills, and he absolutely did that there. We get a timeout for Velva as the play clock was running down. So their first timeout of the second half, first timeout of any team here in the second half. 11.03 to go. Could we get six for Bodine? <laughs> I mean, I, if you're going against re recent history, I would say probably not. <laughs> you could get Ben Sheff one. I mean, he's done a lot, of, a lot of nice things tonight. I want to share the love a little bit. Certainly, certainly. I wonder what the Velva record is for rushing touchdowns in one game. I don't know. There's <laughs> a, a lot of big names and a, a lot of running backs who uh, did a lot of winning and a, a lot of uh, scored a lot of points. You can even look back to uh, you know Gage Florence, a uh, guy who ran the ball a lot, now playing receiver out at uh, MSUM. Uh, one of those playmakers certainly of the, the recent past. So a first and goal situation for Velva. Out of the timeout. Velva looking to line up in a single back formation now. Jumbo set. Bodine in the backfield. Handoff, Bodine up ahead. Bishop Ryan says nothing doing. Second down. Looks like Connor Harvey on the stop there. Still a long ways to go, but obviously Bishop Ryan trying to, to make a, a goal line stand and, and something you can feel good about uh, going into next week. So second and goal from the one and a half. Play clock down to 12. In the shotgun set. Pitch out to Bodine. Fights for it. Continuing. Reaches out. He's in. He's in. Six touchdowns. Hank Bodine. Have a night. That was probably the hardest earned one to this point. You know, met right at the, at the one. Had to reach out. And, and use that extra bit of strength in showing it off there to punch it into the end zone. Six touchdowns. That's, uh, yeah, that, that's a, a good um, good way to get yourself named a player of the night. I think he knew. It, Drew Zwack was there uh, trying to stop him, and after the play, I think he gave him a pat on the sh shoulder and said, hey, that was a good battle down yeah. there at the at the goal line. Yeah, and, and you know, as, as the temperature starts to drop, those guys uh, that are, are, are known for the contact, they, they love playing in these games where they can – it really just uh, impose their will and, and show off the, the strength on, on uh, those, those collision plays. Velva was going to go for two, but they had a delay of game call there, so bring it back five yards on the two-point conversion play. It's 
40 to 6. Now we're in a running clock situation as Velva looks to get to win number 8 on the season. Shep, two points, flings it ahead, and it's picked off by Bishop Ryan. We do have a penalty. You cannot, you cannot return in high school. I don't believe you can return the two-point conversion for two points. So penalty is declined. It was on the Aggies. And so it will remain a 40-6 to six lead for Velva. The Aggies certainly putting the, the, the finishing touches on this and, and you know, going down 6 nothing and 40 unanswered. That's kind of been the, the whole script of this game and just imposing their will, picking up first downs at will. And now, now Bishop Ryan, of course, uh, still, you know, you still got playoff hopes. You still got things to do this season. Not all is lost. You just got to you know, try, and, try and execute. And, and if you're uh, Eric Knutson, you want to be a team that, that plays uh, you know, a, a whole game. Regardless of the score, you want to see effort from your guys. You don't want to see, you know, heads heads down. It's it's just all about, um, you know, going up, going out and saying we're going to play a full four quarters, uh, regardless of the outcome. DLB already winning tonight, so DLB looking to be firmly in that second spot now and potentially have clinched a home playoff game with this Bishop Ryan loss. Yes, 40 to six lead. Velva well on their way now to a regional title. And the penny. And the penny. That's the all important penny trophy. They brought it in here. They sat it at the 50 yard line right before the game. And certainly fun to play for a trophy here as kickoff return, a little dance by Gus Engelhard, but it just passed the 25 to the 27, and that's where Bishop Ryan will get going as the clock continues to run. Apparently, we've got the penny sitting on the, on the east east sideline near near that uh, that end zone. Yeah, right by that back pylon, if we on the side of the dome, could get a shot of it. Yes, imagine those the the players there are going to make a a beeline for it uh, once this game is over. Certainly, Robin, get out of town, buy something with it. <laughs> I wonder what that thing will Not going to get you much these days. I think those players are <laughs> not looking to sell it here. But <laughs> Lundeen, on a first down, throwing it out to Wack. Wack there and uh, maybe a gain of two on the pass play. A player we haven't seen much tonight and a, a player I wanted to make sure we mentioned, Ramsey Walls, obviously the 6'7 receiver. Uh, get The Lions able to get him out for football this year. Obviously known for being being the basketball player, doing a lot for the team uh, on varsity last year. Uh, but then get, trying to get him out for football, funny story on how he actually was able to uh, play football this year. It was a kind of a little wager between him and one of the assistants, Pat Hardy, a one-on-one -on -one game of basketball. And the deal was, if I guess if Pat Hardy won, he would go out for football. Out there for a first down, but yeah, no, you I assume he won because Ramsey's out there. He scored three <laughs> touchdowns this year. He's out there. He was throwing a block on that uh, that Jet Lundeen carry. Yeah, and uh, uh, certainly uh, you like to have those those multi-sport guys, and it, it's tough for for some of those guys who are obviously basketball is his main sport. Getting him out to to, to play football and and, and learn. And, and help the team. Obviously, being you know six seven and an explosive athlete can can do a lot of things. Uh, nice to see him uh, you know trying a new sport this year. And Dean brought down by Jokum. I was talking with uh, Logan Conklin at Minot High earlier this year, and uh, he was talking about the importance of the, the, being the multi-sport athlete, the leadership he learns, uh, being a part of the different programs, and and the different kind of sports minds that. It's a good growth experience, not just being good at the sport that you're playing, but getting that experience, uh, being valuable, even if your focus is on one sport or the other. I guess just learning different ways to, to move your body as well and, and, and knowing, knowing what, what positions are, are uh, advantageous, I guess. I mean, the main example I'm thinking of of being an offensive lineman, I was always told you should go out for wrestling because wrestlers make the best football players, and you learn about tackling and um, in, in all the different uh, you know grappling moves you, you, you learn in wrestling, and it seems, it seems like those guys are great tacklers and are always really physical. I never did. 
course. Well, your prime example here, Koi Okuson, is yeah. a state champ wrestler. Yeah. Beat that, A.J. Hines last year. Yeah, certainly <laughs> translates, uh, you know, football and, and wrestling, but uh, even the, just the conditioning of, of playing basketball and other sports, uh, it seems to work out well for, for a lot of these Class B guys who, who play a lot of different sports. I mean, on third down, going deep, blanket coverage, and we're going to get a penalty on Jokum on the coverage of Bryce Vibeto. He was doing more of kind of playing the receiver versus playing the ball. Uh, didn't really turn around, didn't really make a play on it, and I think that's part of what uh, led to that penalty. Just under five and a half to go in this one. The pass interference. On Jacob, Jacob, excuse me. That'll move the chains. So Bishop Ryan may be looking for some momentum heading into next week. Got to get some more points on the board. Something to feel good about. It's tough to play the number one team in the state, and this Velva team looks almost unstoppable here at the single A level. I mean, it looked so good last year. Um, it seems like they've even taken a step step up, especially on on offense, where they, they put up big points last year. But I think we've seen a few more explosive plays down the field. That element, plus, I mean, you mentioned earlier in the game the ability to defend the pass and just how stout they've been on that with paired with what they what they bring on offense and just the physicality up front every year even with a lot of new guys that's uh that's just a really great combination of things for uh, Velvet Drake and Garrison under five to go second and eight pitch out and falling nearly had an edge Hayden say on the pitch but this time loses a yard on like the turf monster got him. Yeah. And, and certainly, I think, for the past couple of years, having Drake Animus, another year with Garrison in, in the co-op as well, the, the the added numbers helping the Aggies as well. And that's something I asked the, the players about this week, of you know, having those guys. And it, they've, you know, Matt, Matt Weidler said he's he's really been uh, you know, pleased to see those guys kind of come in and expect and you know, accept their roles and in, in the, the way they do things in Velva. And obviously, it's been a, a culmination of things uh, leading to a lot of winning. Lundeen going deep. Is that your guy, Ramsey Walls? Yes, down inside the 10. There he is. There he is. I should have saved the story. <laughs> Ramsey Walls with a big grab. Get back in your point about Velvet, though. I know a lot of people will say, well, yes, they have four different areas coming together as one team, but that's a lot of people to coordinate together when you're possibly adversaries on the basketball court, baseball field, all those different elements, uh, you know, it's hard to come together as four different groups where kids are driving maybe an hour to practice. Exactly. Those, those kids like, you know, Trey Iglehart is uh, about an hour away, you know, practicing, getting to practice in Velva. That, I mean, I couldn't even imagine doing that. You know, two hours of driving each day on top of being a, a student and you're at practice. I mean, man, that's the whole day right there. Certainly. It's Locke with a carry, but it's going to be brought back after a penalty on Bishop Ryan. Illegal, forma uh, illegal formation, it looked like. Or no, this was a penalty on Velva. So, so a half the distance to the goal and a bring the ball to the three. Bishop Ryan looking to punch in here with under three and a half to go. You go back one-on-one -on -one with your Ramsey Walls again? <laughs> Why not? You got the height advantage. Lundeen looked his way. Now he goes back and throws an interception, but we have a penalty. Could Multiple. be pass interference. Two flags on the play. Trying to see who was in on the coverage. It looked like it was Bruner that made the interception. But we'll check the flag. Got to believe it's pass interference of, of some sort. Yep, pass interference on the defense. Bishop Ryan going hurry up now at the one. Half the distance. And the penalty. Second down. Lundin himself up ahead and in. Touchdown. Bishop Ryan, there's the signal. I thought I jumped the gun there for a little bit. but <laughs> I thought he was in for sure. <laughs> I thought he was in as well. His second rushing touchdown of the night, Jet Lundin. Giving something positive for the Lion crowd to cheer about.
Tonight on the Friday Night Frenzy, you will hear from Zelda coach Matt Weidler about this victory and what it could mean ahead for the Aggies. So maybe a Hank Bodine sound. You'll hear from little. someone from Velva. Maybe, how, maybe how, someone how from Hank Bodine, maybe. I think that's a, just going out on a limb there. Lundeen lining up for a two-point conversion. Pressure in his face, and he is swarmed. Nothing doing there. Speaking of Hank Bodine. There, there he is. is. <laughs> Same with Luke Selzler. Selzler and Bodine combining on the sack there. 40 to 12. Velva leading on their way to 8 0. They will have home playoff games in the first two rounds, at least. Of course, they got to win their first game. Nothing to guarantee in the playoffs. But. No well, trap games. Take it one game at a time, as the coach speak I'm sure that usually goes. That's something that's <laughs> been preached over and over again at Velva for many years, even, even with the uh, great coach Larry Sandy, who'd been there for a long time. Building up this program. Saw Larry Sandy tonight. Seems to have been enjoying himself as a spectator this year yeah. at Velva Games. A lot of years of coaching football, a lot of wins. And it, it was so fun to see him last year uh, at, at the Dakota Bowl, that, that big moment. Of course, the fourth down stop, but being right there when when the, the clock struck zero and it was official that he don't, was able to go out on top, just, just seeing the emotion and all, everything pour out from that Velva sideline was just uh, so fun, so fun to watch. And, Honestly, I'd say that's probably my favorite moment uh, in North Dakota so far uh, over this well over a year now. You think it's hard for him to be a spectator? <laughs> a little bit. All, I think it's a little hard, right? If, if, if it were me, I would be like, I wouldn't run that there. I wouldn't have done that here. But <laughs> it, it's, hard, it's hard to complain too much uh, tonight in, in pretty much the, the whole season so far. It's been a lot of a lot of things to cheer about. And uh, I think I think uh, Coach Sandy can kind of kind of you know sit back and, and feel that the, the program's in a good spot right now. Just a formality here as we kick it away. 2.39 to go. The defending state champs, as we get a little onside kick action, fight for the ball, covering it up, is Evan Wrench. And Velva will take over at the 42-yard line. Lines going to everything in their toolbox. So Velva can't quite run out the clock here. 2.36 to go. First down would go a long way. After we're done here, be sure to tune in to KX News at 10. Switch on over to KXMB, KXMC, wherever you're watching. There's a direct snap to Eigelhart. Now to his left, gets up ahead, first down yardage, and that should pretty much do it. I go hard the Garrison guy I mentioned. He had a big seven. start to this game. He, had, he did. Yeah, he was, was the only white guy catching. Ben Shep passes the start. Had that run early, a lot of those catches. And, and nothing, it, it wasn't, uh, you know, we've seen him make some plays down the field a lot in, in the DLB game earlier in the season. Uh, it was just a lot of those intermediate Intermediate routes, you know, just going, getting 10, 20 yards at a time. And, and those chunk plays really seem to add up early and really help the Aggies, I think, get in a rhythm and really start to impose their will in this game. Coach Shep handing it off Bodine up ahead, rumbling for a couple of yards. Close in on the finish of this one. Velva looking good. Just a couple of plays left before this one is over. Second and eight. A 40 to 12 margin here, a handoff ahead. Little pitch out, third down. The 
Powell looking sensational throughout this one. The team prime to repeat. Of course, you have other contenders out there that will have something to say. Kindred certainly a top team once again. A group that was upset in the quarterfinals a year ago. Dickinson Trinity has looked unstoppable out of Region 4. Trinity, a team that beat this Bishop Ryan team earlier in the year. We bring up third down for Velva. like a penalty. It'll still be third down. West Hope also undefeated on the year. The four teams that have been undefeated all year. Excuse me, West Hope in nine man. As we approach the final play here. Jeff nearly bobbling it, this time taking a knee. And that will run out the clock. I think correct, it was Langdon was the fourth team that I was thinking of. Hard to keep track of all these teams and classes. That'll bring up fourth down, but more importantly, that'll bring up the final score here. Velva winning 40-12 to on the road over Bishop Ryan. The Aggies being undefeated. They win their region. They will host two playoff games at least if they get to the state quarterfinals. Alva, a big-time winner here at Herb Parker Stadium. We want to thank you for watching tonight on the Dakota CW.